Slip your hands, Lord, help me. And whisper something to the Lord again. Never get tired of communing with His Spirit. You will find out when you leave this realm that the only assignment man will carry out for all eternity is the assignment of worshipping the Lord in the beauty of His holiness. Every time we have the privilege to connect to Zion and to lift incense from the earth realm, it's a reminder of that immortal function that we will carry out for all ages and for all eternity. And it is in worship that our true essence is really given expression. So talk to the Lord. This is where you should have the greatest inspiration. Not when you talk to mortal men, but when you behold the spirit. You will need the agency and the help of that spirit to be able to communicate his heart. At that point, your intellect will count for nothing. This is where we find ourselves in God. This is when the reality of God breaks upon us. It's so beautiful to worship Him. It's like the river, the Bible says, that make it glad the city of God. Talk to Jesus. It's a sign that you are not rusty in the spirit. When a man is rusty in the spirit, it becomes difficult to communicate with the spirit. <laughs> you want to check whether you are alive. Attempt talking to a spirit. Then you understand that there is an energy source that is beyond the frailty of your mortality. When a man can communicate with a spirit, it means there is something working on his inside that sustains his capacity beyond everything that his mortal constitution can provide. Look upon him this morning and give him worship. I just want to be where you are. Dwelling daily in your presence. I don't want to worship from afar. Draw me near to where you are. I just want to be where you are. Your dwelling place forever. Take me to the place where you are. I just want to be with you. I want to be where you are. Dwelling in your presence, feasting at your table, surrounded by your glory, in your presence, that's where I always want to be, I just want Thank you, Holy Spirit, for the enablement that you grant us in order to connect with God in heaven and to experience His reality. Thank you because therein is the true essence of our being discovered and the ability to express the same is furnished. So this morning, even as you bring us to the very heights of Zion, we ask that we will go from strength to strength according to the writings of scriptures. So that experientially, we will be garnished with strength to represent 
the counsel of God, the nature of God and the will of God in our realm and in our territories. They call the glory Father. In Jesus' name. You may be seated. God bless you. Why you see God breaking out of people in very excellent dimensions? It's so amazing. You see, man is not designed to express beauty in mortality. There is no beauty in your mortal frame. It is your ability to allow God break out of you that makes you beautiful indeed. This is what a lot of people don't understand. They labor so much. <laughs> the Bible calls everything we do to this. He said this is an eating vessel. With all your makeup and mascara, see, forget it. <laughs> your true beauty is locked up on your inside. When you express it, even the angels will marvel. Deeper in love with you. Jesus, hold me close in your embrace. Take me deeper. Deeper than I've ever been before. I just want to love you more and more. How I love to be deeper in love. Do you love the Lord? Do you know what it means to love the Lord? Take me deeper. Deeper in love with you. Jesus, hold me close in your hand. We join our hands as we lift our voice. We cry, Holy. Holy. What is the love? The angels bow down in adoration. We join our hands as we lift our voice. We cry, Holy. Holy. See, the angels have seen him for many aeons. They dwell in eternity, a realm that is not governed by time. But every time they behold him, they fall on their faces. When you look upon my friend Victor and you see his beard, you may admire him and say, Wow. But if you look at him after five seconds, he will become normal. He will be here for five minutes, you won't notice him again. But when the monarch of Zion appears, the more you see him, the more you are sucked into him because his glory, it evolves. So men that have seen him, they love him every morning. The angels, the Bible said the 20 and 4 elders, they fall on their faces and they say, holy. They sit around the throne, but they are never exhausted. It's never enough. They love him more. They love him. We are not serving God because we are afraid of hell. His love constrains us. We cannot but worship Him. We cannot but walk with Him. We cannot but love Him. Because an economy beyond fear and death is at work on our inside. We have touched life. So life now flows like a fountain. That's why we can't choose the word anymore. He said, the angels bow down in adoration. We join our hands as we lift our voice. We cry, cry holy. <laughs> if you are still serving God because of fear of death and hell, you have not known Him. There's an economy that is deeper. When relationship is born, life begins to flow from your inside like a fountain. 
So you wake up at night, you, you want to hear his voice. The reason you wake up at night to pray is not because there is a chain prayer. Something awakens you from your bed. So the psalmist, even on his bed, he said he's contemplating his ways. Ah! Jehovah needs to help us. Because the devil have understood the technology of, of wooing humankind. So when the devil shows up, he doesn't give you rules. He finds his way into your soul. And he gets the lust that is in your heart. And he enslaves you by your lust. So you are up at night. All through the night watching pornography. But you can't read the Bible at night. When you come to God, you want to relate with him by rules. But the devil understands the intelligence of sucking himself into your soul until he makes you a slave. Because the guy wants to get the attention of the girl. He will do everything. Round the clock he's thinking about her and he's planning all the strategies to get her attention. He doesn't know that is how the Holy Ghost attempts to woo the souls of men. So that you will fall in love with him afresh. The reason you give your body to be burned is not necessarily for sacrifice, it's for love. But many don't love him. We come to him because of what we can get. We come to him because of what he has to offer. But his reward is himself. He said, I am your shield and your exceeding great reward. I want to give you myself. What is the Lamb? The angels bow down in adoration. We join our hands as we lift our voice. We, we cry, cry holy. When you come before the Lord, it's important for you to prepare your hearts. Because the business begins from within. If you are not well taught, you may come for meetings to see men because of the stories you heard about them. So your head is prepared, but your heart may not be prepared. The idea is for you to receive an encounter from God. He reveals himself to you afresh. And that encounter will result in a heightened consciousness of his reality. If truly you have met him, something happens to your consciousness. He becomes more real to you. So the goal of encounter is to create a heightened consciousness of his reality. The realness of his essence becomes your awareness. And when that is done, then you receive of him and then you are transformed to become like him. Because the goal of God is not to dwell in this mortal frame. The goal of God is not to live in the natural realm. His goal is for his reality to be expressed in this world through you and I. But how can God be expressed when we don't know him? This is why we come to the mountains of Zion. That we may encounter him again. Touch his essence and then become like him. So when people look upon us, all they see is Jesus. But the devil wants to reverse the protocol. So he makes you do everything for your hair, for your face, for your body. Because the devil wants to showcase you. And the truth is that when you are showcased, it is the devil that is in. Because this nature is a mortal and a fallen nature. He knows that God cannot permeate you if your soul is disconnected from his realm. So he separates you from God. And you think you are showcasing yourself. Whereas when we look upon you, it is the spirit from Hades that you reveal. This is why we do the things we do, thinking we are looking more beautiful. But they said this glory is hid in earthen vessel. If God cannot break out of your vessel, you are not in this realm. You are only giving expression to the dimensions of hell. You may be deceived by its subtlety. But when wisdom comes to you, when you encounter God afresh, you will let go of many things. They will not count anymore. The beauty of man is his ability to reveal God. 
a man who does not sustain the capacity to reveal God no matter how he tries he will not glow in Zion when we begin to give expression to God then something happens his nature becomes one with our nature so if you want to really x-ray us and give definition to our essence you have to check God out first because we become an expression of his reality that is when man becomes the most glorious creature in this realm because when you see him you see God Philip said to Jesus he said show us the father that we might see him and Jesus said you mean you've been with me and you don't know the father he said whoever have seen me have seen the father so Jesus did not come to this world to reveal himself he came to this world to give expression to the father so Jesus was a theater upon whom you look and then the dimensions of the father which is in the invisible realm is manifested so the words he speak he said it's the father that is in me that doeth the works he said I came in my father's name I am an expression of the father so Paul said God who had sundry times and in diverse manners spake in time past unto the fathers by the prophet hath in this last day spoken unto us by his son and then in a bid to give expression to the reality of the son he said who being the brightness of his glory so Jesus was the full revelation of the father the express image of his person his life was an errand from the father so every time you encounter Jesus you were touching the full expression of the will of the father every time you look upon Jesus his dimensions were the expression of the father so he was most glorious you couldn't touch him you couldn't hurt him because his reality was hid in heaven when he spake he spake from heaven when he acted he acted from heaven his life was a script that was being read to humankind of the dimensions of God that was hid in the heavens so every time Jesus entered the city that is what the father is doing every time Jesus uttered his word that's what the father is saying from heaven he was a visible expression of the dimensions of the throne room so any man who taught Jesus was already in heaven he was in the throne room you wanted to know the will of the father come to Jesus you wanted to know the dimensions of the father come to Jesus you wanted to know the love of the father come to Jesus he had no life on earth he was a living epistle he was an errand from heaven and when he was about to depart he now made a striking statement while he was in this world he was not alive it was the father that was alive through him and now that he's about to leave this world that's when he wants to become alive and the only way he can be alive is through you and I so his life was a test a test experiment to reveal to you how possible a human being can live the life of a spirit the same way he was on earth and he lived the life of the father now that he's living the earth he wants you now to live his own life so any man who is truly alive every time you contact him you contact Jesus when you speak the voice of Jesus should be heard why do you think he say lay hands on the sick the sick will recover because when you touch the sick Jesus touches the sick when you talk to the sinner Jesus talks to the sinner how do you think somebody who is bound to immorality can hear you and then the powers break men don't sustain such stature only spirit can speak to a man and reconfigure his constitution so when we speak we speak with the voice of the spirit of the Christ and until a man comes to that point when he becomes the expression of the Christ on earth he is not living that is what the Bible meant when he said they that liveth for pleasure not for the will of God 
he said they are dead why they live so when we consider subjects like living epistles we are actually telling men that you don't have the right to live on earth only Jesus will live through you what must a man get himself involved in what protocol must be activated in the life of a man for Jesus to live through him remember I told you yesterday that you were born in sin and you were born into a cracked world a world that was falling separated to different governments in darkness how is it possible for you to come into that world and then begin to live like a god in darkness there are well defined protocols strategic divine intelligence has been put into this realm to make it possible for a mortal being to live like a spirit entity many men walked in these dimensions and their lives were revelations of God. God himself will bear them witness. He said, Enoch walked with God and was not because God took him. While Enoch was alive, the Bible said, he himself bore witness that he pleased God. And he told his generation that God will take him. That's a man who is alive. Paul was walking around and his life was threatened. He said, ah, for me to die is gain. I don't understand that economy. I'm alive because of you, not for myself. Have you imagined it before? So the reason I'm alive is to profit the church. But just in case I leave, I'm going to be with the Lord. Heaven is my destination. I'm just on earth running an errand. Meanwhile, you, you are laboring for certificate. You are laboring to build a house for a car. You are laboring to appear as the, the queen of the beauty budget. You don't know that there is a superior assignment. That your life is supposed to be an effulgence of the life of God. Somebody touches you and he knows he has touched a spirit. He knows you were talking, but the voice was hearing. He's a spirit because he didn't hear you in his head. He heard you beyond his head. Your voice traveled into his heart. So he said, when Peter spoke to them, he said their heart were caught. And instantly, his words changed their destiny forever. He said, men and brethren, what shall we do? Now we don't want to live anymore. Tell us how to live. Is that a man talking? He has entered into something. He can colonize his world. This is the plan of God for you and I. Maybe your life is supposed to be an expression of the love of God. So God walks himself into you so much that anybody you talk to, all he touches is love. Your life is supposed to be an expression of the wisdom of God. So when you speak, people will wonder, what is he reading? Where did he read these things from? They don't know that you are living from heaven. Jesus was walking on earth. He said, the son of man, which is in heaven. How did he live that kind of life? You become an expression of wisdom. Every time you speak, is an effulgence of mysteries. Have you heard a man like, have you heard Apostle Arum of before? He talks for five minutes and you are like this. Sometimes it's when you hear the message five times that you now say, okay. So this is what he was saying. Is that person talking from his brain? He's talking from heaven. A man shows up and he's the revelation of the glory of God. He enters a building and everybody is under the floor crying. He has not said anything. Now begin to wonder, I say, who is this? No, you can't know him. If you want to know him, go and check God. When you study God enough, you will know the dimension of God he represents. Because that man is a dimension. When you look at him, it's a dimension of God you see. You don't see a man. Have you gone for Joshua Selman's meeting? He just comes to say, Praise the Lord. And then people are, 100 people are already on the floor. What is, is that a person? Have you gone for Reverend Chris or Akilome's meeting? They line people up on wheelchairs and he comes. What happened to the bone? The bone was fractured. They say the spinal cord had been destroyed. The doctor said he will never walk again. And the doctor is not joking. The doctor is an expert 
about human physiology and anatomy. He has studied the nerves are dead. There is no way the nerves can live. But you hold the man, you say stand up, and life enters the nerve. They are impactors of God to people. You heard Bishop Oedeko talking and it's as if he was the one that decoded all the writings of scriptures. As he quotes one and you are trying to quote them before you know you are doing like this. Men who are living epistles. When you look at their lives, they are revelations of different dimensions of God. Because something has happened to them. And I told you yesterday that the first way to enter such depths and dimensions is for you to come under the government of the Holy Spirit. Because when you were created in the studios of eternity, He was there. He knows that when you were designed, the dimension of God you can host is love before you ever came into time. He knows that when you were designed, the dimensions of God you can host is his mysteries. But you came through the body of sin into a fractured creation. So while you were in your mother's womb, you were already a, a carrier of the sin nature. And you now show up in time. And that nature wants to enslave you. So the Holy Ghost comes by the finger of God. And he places you under a government. Because until the sin nature is broken, that dimension of himself that is wired into you to give expression to him can never be expressed. So I told you he brings government. That is why every time a man comes close to God, the first thing that hits him are laws of the spirit. Came to church talking, but suddenly talking becomes a crime. Because a government is spiraling from heaven into his soul, knowing that he is supposed to be an extension of God from Zion. And the only way he can do it is to connect back to Zion. And the things that will disconnect him, the Holy Ghost chisels them out of his life through a strong hand. Pray, Lord, let this thing change. He said, you will go through the fire. You will not be burned. So go on. Pray, Holy Ghost, let it change. He said, you will go through the waters. You will not be drowned. But until you pass through the school of process, you cannot be who you were designed to be. Because for the world to see the love of God, then you must come alive. Because you are the only opportunity heaven has to reveal love to this world. So everything about God's love cannot be seen on earth unless you come alive. So the Holy Ghost will insist until you are broken. Because if God can never express love on earth, then the carriers of his love must become aligned with his government. Lord, change the situation. No way. If the power of God must hit this realm, God will not come down from heaven. You are the custodian of his power. But that power is being locked in your soul by lust. That power is being choked in your soul by lying. That power is being choked in your soul by immorality. So the Holy Ghost will put that government there until you are broken. Because there is something that power will do on earth that you are the only signature of power on earth. And when these things begin to happen, then all of a sudden darkness begins to run away from our territories. Because the earnest expectation of creation waited for the manifestation of the sons of God. For creation lieth in bondage and travail. The bondage of corruption is upon creation. The only way creation can be liberated is when men who can carry the signature of the life of God begin to enter the territory. So John came alive and they didn't bother to go to the tabernacle. The synagogue was not the spot. He left and went into the wilderness and he was crying. And the whole Judea went looking for him in the wilderness. They know that to be relevant is to be able to host and to reveal God. So these men yielded themselves to the government of God. And a point came their lives became a mystery. When I look upon women like Katrin Kuman, I begin to wonder. I now realize that you are not called to be creative, like Apostle will say. You are called to be yielded because your life is a story that God is telling from heaven. A weakling, lanky, she could not even have a man admire her well. Her love life was a mess because among men she had no relevance. 
But suddenly she fused into heaven so high in the spirit. And the point came, she was a light in her generation. She comes into a meeting and 25 meters away, people are under the power. People jumping from wheelchairs and she gave meaning to many lives. Because she realized that her advantage is not in her looks. Her advantage is in the dimension of God she could communicate. These are the things men see and makes them submit to that government. When you see a man who is still struggling with submitting to the Holy Spirit, he does not have the right estimation of the flesh. He thinks his look, his height and his haircut is an advantage. He thinks his voice is an advantage. He thinks his money is an advantage. This is how many travel for long until when they come to that spot in life where they think it's their time. Then a demon shows up. And he, he, he marginalizes every labor they have put on ground for 10 years. Then they go back to nothing. Then they realize that your advantage is not in yourself. It's in the mountains of Zion. This is why we yield to God. A man who does not yield to God has no future. He's a mirage. He will see greatness ahead. When he gets there, he will discover he's still ahead. Because what he saw was a lie. Reality cannot be born out of his spirit. And as young men, it's important for us to know these things and let our thinking processes resonate around it. So that we don't realize it when we are old. The Bible says even beauty, it says beauty is vain. The only thing that stands the test of time is the dimension of God that you are able to host. There is something wired into you that the world must see. And when the world begins to see it, then your boundaries begin to enlarge. One man now having the strength of a thousand. But it begins with the acceptance to yield to the Lord. And when you yield to the Lord and accept that his government will come upon you. You know, Jesus said, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom, the government, the authority of God. When the man accepts that that government should come upon him, then something happened. Jesus said the dimensions of the supernatural, the impossible becomes his constitution. He said, as the wind blow it. And thou listest not from whence it cometh or from whence it goeth. He said, so are they that are born of the Spirit of God. The first thing that happens is that you are exposed to government. But as you stay under government, he says something happens. You become like the wind. The same possibilities that express themselves in God begins to express themselves in you. Because there is an intelligence in that government to make you become like God. And I want to show you three things. Three things this morning that should inform your value system. Because relevance is not only a reality in time. Relevance is truly a reality in eternity. Because time in itself, <laughs> if you have been in this realm long enough, you will discover that everything is a lie. It's a mirage that God puts you in in order to invest in where reality itself is. This is why we pray for the sick. The guy may have cancer, but when you check in reality, you know this cancer is a lie. So you superimpose the dimensions of reality. That's how it works for everything. You may look at yourself at 25 or 23. Wow. You yourself, you admire yourself. Wait until you are 50. You will see that your lips will deny you. Your cheek that you saw that was glittering like a balloon will deny you. The cheek will become like this. The hair that stood so gallant that you shaved and it's like they put a knife. When you become 80 years old, you will look for the hair. Then you will not find the hair again. <laughs> then you will realize that everything in time is a lie. Time. You got up, you say, I will do this thing. When you are 70, if you want to do like this, then your bones will do like this. Then you understand that time is a lie. We don't invest in time. There is a realm 
where men don't grow old, they become brighter like the sun because their reality becomes one with God eternal. I want to show you something about that realm this morning. Hallelujah. Sit down. Sit down. Don't stand there. You will suffer. Glory to the Lamb. Glory to the Father. You are seated on the throne. Hallelujah. Glory to the Lamb. Glory to the Father. You are seated on the throne. Hallelujah. Glory to the Lamb. Glory to the Father. You are seated on the throne. You are a project that God is working upon. You don't know that you are called into a partnership. The first thing God does to you is to mingle you with light so that you can reflect Him. Remember, we are talking about what? Living epistles. The reason we preach to a sinner and we are not perturbed is because we know that there is a measure of light in his spirit. If we bring the light of God and it resonates with him, the one in his spirit will gush out. He said that life is the true light that lighted every man that cometh into the world. So long as a man is in this world, there is a measure of discernment in his spirit. So when he mingles with God, something happens. That which is locked on his inside begins to illuminate. Oneness is secured and God lives from within him out. That is the same thing the devil wants to corrupt. Because that measure of discernment has the ability to dictate signals from hell and signals from heaven. Because at that point he's a mast. Waiting to be alighted upon and given expression. So the first thing that happens is to bring the word of life to a man with the assurance that he can recognize that truth because before he came into time, he was fabricated by the word. Every one of us is created of the word. So we have the capacity to interact with the word. So when the word of God begins to make contact with us, something happens. Light begins to break out of us. As you touch the word of God, the word of God becomes life in you. The Bible said, in the beginning was the word. When he's to himself, he's the word. When he's with God, he's the word. But when he comes to a man, he becomes life. The word was with God and the word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. John chapter 1 verse 1 to 5. All things were made by what? The word, including you. And without it was not anything made that was made. In him was life. The life was the light of men. The moment that word makes contact with you, he begins to shine as a light. So what you carry into your word is light. Because God is light. So the word of God comes to make you a dimension of God. The moment you make contact with the word, he said that life is the light of man. It begins to break out of your inside. So when you are seen, both by spirits and men, it is light they see. They know that what is coming out of you is a dimension of God. So when a man is not able to reflect the light of God, he has not made contact with the word. Jesus would therefore say, Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeded from the mouth of God. Because until man makes contact with God, his dimensions and the dimensions of God on his inside will never find expression. He came unto his own, his own received him not, but as many as received him, to them he gave power. 
the right to become the sons of God to them that receive the word. They receive the word, the authority to become the offsprings of the word. They receive the word until when you look at them, it is the word you see. They, they, they become the mobile expression of the word. The authority to become descendants and offspring of the word is granted to them because they received the word. And he said it doesn't end there. He said, as we beheld him. The word that they have received, they now sit upon it and they begin to meditate upon it. This is the protocol of becoming a living epistle. Most of us have no business with the world. We hope that one day something will happen and we will become prophets. Or we will become the governor of this state and we will change it. You don't know what is there. When you become the governor, then you understand that there is a throne of darkness that regulates the power and the scepter of that city. This is why many go with good intention. They come out by, they have become different kinds of creatures. I will change this world. How? When you yourself came into a broken world by the sequence and the protocol of sin, how can you change it? You must become stalked with a dimension from another realm to be able to alter the things that you see in this realm. And the only thing that comes from outside of this realm that still sustains the purity of God is His word. He said, as we beheld by looking upon it studying it meditating upon it he says something happens what we now see is not just the word but the glory if you have not stayed on the word until the glory comes alive it means you cannot become the reality of god you may scream and shout you will think you are moving until the devil comes there are many checkers the devil uses for a man one of the checkers is anxiety. If the devil wants to know the degree of your transformation, he will create a circumstance around you. And then he will check your response. If a circumstance comes around you and anxiety comes out of you, it means there is crisis. The devil comes with temptations to check. <laughs> That's why he came to Jesus at one occasion. He tried him with three different things. None of them worked. Why? He was the word. To what extent have you become the word? Is what will determine the commodity you will bring to your generation. We can talk whatever we want to talk, but it will not be a witness. Unless it is born from the womb of the word. Because he said, as we beheld him, we now saw the glory of the father, full of grace and truth. A man who wants to be a living epistle must be what? A perpetual beholder of the world. Because that is when the spirit that transforms is giving authority to walk on his inside. You can call on the Holy Ghost for money tonight. He can't walk. Until the foundation of the world is laid. When you behold the world and you see the glory, then the spirit begins to walk. 2 Corinthians 3.18 He said As we all with unveiled faces Beholding as in a glass The glory of the Lord We are changed From glory to glory By the spirit Unto what? The image of him that we have seen A man who begins to behold the world Over time He will notice that lost have died This is why I told you It's not a game of rules and regulations it's a game of life flowing out of your chambers. He was rude, but he kept beholding. And over time, he wakes up, he discovers that meekness had become part of him. He doesn't know when that dimension was weaved into him. He was weak. He was carrying the spirit of loss for 10 years until he began to behold the world. It took him many disciplines to stay pure for three months. But suddenly he began to behold the world and something begins to break out of his inside, from his inside. And then he checks, he said, in the last two years, I've not desired somebody. 
What has happened? We all with unveiled faces. Beholding us in the glass. So living epistles are beholders of the glory. You cannot be a testament to your generation until light breaks out of your inside. Because the economy of the world among men is to be a light that shines in darkness. The devil puts together every artillery that he has. But we all with unveiled faces beholding as in a glass. Suddenly, the armory of darkness becomes vulnerable and epileptic. So you enter into a place. They say every man that came here fell. You laugh. Because this one who is coming is a carrier of the glory. And the light shines in the darkness. And the darkness comprehended it not. This is why Jesus was bold to send us into all the worlds. He didn't send us to heaven. He sent us into darkness. Because he knows that the light we contact should shine in darkness. But we run to church to shine. How can you shine here when everybody is supposed to be light? Nobody goes to the brothel. All your gospel end in grammar. And the people in church are the ones who will be impressed with your grammar. But you can't talk to the Muslim guy. You can't talk to the harlot. Meanwhile, that's where you were sent to. Not even your classmate noticed that there's anything in your life. You are not a living epistle. This thing is not zeal and boldness. This thing is becoming one with the word of God. So you take the responsibility of sitting on it until it breaks into your soul. This is where Christianity becomes difficult. It's easy to come for a program and then you are wowed by what you saw. And you are going home, you are happy. Oh boy, today's service. No, no. It begins when you are alone. The interaction with the world. It eats into your soul until you think it, you talk it, and you do it. Then a living epistle appears in the territory. It's a project that God himself is working upon. Because what you don't know is that the city that is building, that city will shine with the light of God. And you and I are that city. So a man who does not shine cannot be part of the blocks of that city. In Revelation chapter 21 verse 11. He said, I saw the new Jerusalem descending from heaven. Prepared as the bride of God. And he said the wall of that city was shining like jasper. So any man who does not interact with light on earth to the degree of shining. He doesn't have a place in the wall of that city. This is why I told you that relevant transcend time. Relevance transcends time. It's an eternal infrastructure that God is building through men. The city that we appear that is called the bride of Christ is a city that illuminates with light. The very light of God that it contacts on earth. Because in Revelation chapter 5 chapter 4 verse 3 the Bible said God himself he said he glows like Jasper. And the wall of that city in Revelation 21 verse 11 he said it shines like jasper. And Paul will come to tell us in 1 Corinthians chapter 4 verse 11 he said you are God's beauty. You are the wall of the new Jerusalem. Everything God is doing to your soul is because of the part of that wall that you will fit in. But the first thing that qualifies you to be part of that city is for you to conform enough to be able to illuminate his light. The jasper light of God. To what extent do you illuminate it? It's what will give you a place in that wall. You know, when the apostles were following Jesus, they thought it was ministry. Until the Bible will go to tell us that in that city, he said there are 12 foundations and he said the name of the 12 apostles of the Lamb are signatures on each of the foundation. So they didn't know that when they were following Jesus to preach the gospel, they were actually beginning to build the new Jerusalem. So what Jesus was doing through the apostle was to build an eternal city that himself will dwell in in the end of time. Because he said, God, the tabernacle of God is among men. 
He said, and God will now dwell with his people. Man came into this world defied by corruption because of the error of the first man. God can no longer inhabit among men. So what he does is to allow himself to seep into you. To walk you from the inside until you totally conform to him to the degree that he can express himself through you. Then he puts a signature on you and then he gives you a place in the city to come. So in that city when we assemble he dwells in our midst. So he said that city we have no son. He said for himself we be the light of that city. And every one of us shining like Jasper. But to what degree are you shining in darkness? The first thing that gives you a place in eternity is the light that breaks out of you. But unfortunately, we are men of rules and regulation. That's why they kept the law for 1,500 years. None of them passed. Because God is not necessarily looking for people that fear Him. Not reverence now. And trying to obey rules. No. The devil doesn't make anybody a slave just by, by obeying him. He will set up a sequence of darkness in your soul. And it is that darkness that flow out of your soul that you obey. You don't go to steal because the devil commanded you to go and steal. You go to steal because a sequence of lust is activated on your inside. And the devil keeps staring it until what breaks out of you overwhelms you. So you go in the direction of it. That's why you are a slave. The way God brings men to walk with him in obedience is the light that they carry in their spirit. This is why when the light of God begins to break out of your spirit, you discover that you become more committed to God. Commitment in this context, not service in church. Commitment in this context is a life of perpetual sacrifice. Whatever he says to do now becomes your delight. God speaks and the more you do it, the more you are fulfilled. You were struggling to fast for 12 days before, but light began to break out. And then you receive an instruction to fast for 21 days. And then you are there. The day the 21 day clocks, that day you become happy. So every time you serve him now, joy breaks out of your inside. Because you are not a slave. You are becoming his desire. You are becoming his will. You are becoming his likeness. Because now you are interacting with light. This is why many struggle. Because light will always choke you. Darkness will always choke you. Unless light breaks out of you. The economy of light is the economy of eternal relevance. You reign. You ancient Zion's king. Kadosh, Kadosh, you are mighty on your throne. The politics that is going on in this realm is quite enormous, but many are not aware. When the devil brings a challenge to confound you and to destroy you, God now uses that challenge to reveal to you the area of your weakness and he begins to supply grace. So he says, We are seen abound. Much more grace abound. The devil brought it for good, but God has the power to cause all things to work together for your good. The devil brought it for your destruction, but God has the power to cause everything because it's a politics. All of them are contending for your soul. The devil wants you to become part of the blocks of Hades, and God wants you to become part of the blocks of Zion. But the battleground is in the soul. So the devil wants to draw you to himself and he creates a challenge so that out of fear, out of lust, you can walk in that direction. Then God supplies grace. He makes you realize the point of weakness and then scriptures and light begins to come out of your spirit. Come out of your spirit. He tells you, you will die. You will die. Instead of walking in fear because you have interacted with the world, then suddenly something breaks out. I shall not die, but live to declare the counsel of God in the land of the living. That's the economy. Everything that should destroy you, light breaks out and confounds darkness. But a personality that has no light breaking out of his spirit becomes a slave and a puppet in the hands of the devil. What he doesn't know is that sin darkens his soul. Darkens his soul until the only place where he can live now is the dwelling of you. The bottom part of Hades. Where the prince of darkness himself dwells. But when the word of God is activated on your inside. You begin to glow from your inside. 
you glow from your inside. Every darkness that attempts to choke you, light flows like a river. The economy of the word and the spirit. Investing the word on your inside so that the Holy Spirit can have raw materials to process your soul to become the likeness of God. This is how God works on a man. A man that the word of God is cast in his spirit is a man in whom the Holy Ghost is epileptic and paralyzed because there are no resources to work with. That's why most of us, when we are in crisis, we are checking nothing to hold on to because the Holy Ghost has no raw material. So you fall sick, you are trying, you, you, you want to exercise faith, but there is nothing the Holy Ghost works with. Suddenly, the boy puts pressure on you. And then you know you shouldn't do this, but there is nothing the Holy Ghost can work on. So you struggle until the energy of your flesh is used up. Because it is the destiny of the outward man to perish. It is the inward man that is renewed. So every time pressure comes, we bow. Because there are no resources. The Holy Ghost is on your inside, but he is handicapped. The tools to build it are not there. Paul, by wisdom, in 1 Timothy 4.13, will now tell his son, he said, until I come, give attendance to reading, to exhortation, and to doctrine. Give attendance. Make it your daily priority. Proverbs 4.20, he said, my son, my son, attend to my words. Give thy ears to my saying. Let them not depart from thy heart. Keep them in the midst of thy heart. He said they are alive to them that find them. They are alive. The way life is trafficked into the soul of a man is when the word is made flesh in his spirit by the Holy Spirit. There are many people today that even when they have problems, it will not be an alarm for them to go and inject the word. When you have headache, it's an alarm that something is wrong. So you quickly take drugs. All the problems of your life are alarms that there is scarcity of the word in your spirit. Because according as his divine power, 2 Peter 1.3 had given unto us all things that pertain to life and godliness through the knowledge, through the revelation of the word that has called us to glory and virtue. So the only way a man can walk in glory and emit virtue is the knowledge the revelation of the word the workings of the holy spirit upon the raw material of the word in the spirit but this dynamic is not functional in many believers this is why we are many but the effect is not felt in our territory we grow in number but we don't grow in stature so we celebrate number so much at the expense of stature the pastor, the preacher, the evangelist, the apostle, he is okay when the number is 7,000, 10,000, 50,000. But he doesn't take the labor of getting the word chiseled into their soul. So in the day of trouble, everybody fall like a pack of cards. Many in number, but weak in strength. And the devil knows. So he's not troubled when we gather in church. His business is in the soul. We can gather and do all the praise and what. No worry. Ah, enjoy yourself. Church itself now has become a social gathering. Those days they came to church to receive instructions. Some people left church. And the only thing that was quickened in their heart was to go to the worst part of sin. They, they want to die for God. The only thing that hits their heart is the cities that are not evangelized. They want to go there and bring the gospel. Men like John Knox will say, God, give me Scotland or I die. What did he hear? He can now literally perceive the body in the heart of the Father. The Christianity of those days is not the same with ours. Because we don't know God experientially. We know about God. And when you know about God, you want to say, you want to talk about Him in the place of least resistance. But when you know Him, you will go to where He wants you to be. That's why all of us are struggling for puppets. Meanwhile, there are many territories that are not evangelized. 
All the evangelists are not going there. Everybody that receives a calling is going to Abuja or Lagos or Port Harcourt. Meanwhile, there are few people in Meduguri. I've not seen one Nigerian evangelist that is going to Afghanistan. All of us are going to US and London. <laughs> because we are not truly light. When we become light, darkness becomes the destination where we go because we want to set the place alive. When Jesus became, the Bible said he went to the borders of Zebulun. And he said, the people that sat in darkness. So Jesus, the moment he became light, he began to hunt darkness. But we run from darkness. The guy is talking in the power service. God will show up today until they brought a cripple. When he saw the witch here, the volume of his voice goes down. We even minister, we act as if we don't see them. <laughs> yeah, take it, take it, take it. But when he see the cripple man, um, amen, amen, amen. <laughs> But in the days of light, they knew that that crippled man was held back by darkness. So the man will walk to him and say, Silver and gold have I none. But such as I have, give I unto you. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. And the Bible said, the guy didn't rise. He held him and dragged him up. Why did he do that? Because that was the same thing that the light himself was doing. That was the same thing Jesus was doing. So when they show up, you don't need to say, Jesus, where are you? Silver and gold have I known. Did you read Jesus came? He said, Ought not this daughter of Abraham, who has been bound these 18 years, be free? And he said, Woman, thou art loose. And the woman stood up. He was speaking to bones and they were responding. And then another man who have interacted with the world enough now shows up. And he sees somebody else with a bone issue. The same measure of light that was communicated, he has the same. So the same way Jesus commanded the bones, he commands the bones. Light is not to talk Bible. It's for the word to be mingled in your soul until everything God would have done if he was there, you do the same. These are living epistles. The living epistles are not apostles and prophets. They are the men that can bring the life of God on the scene. They are the men that can bring witness to Zion. They are the men that can express the realities of the kingdom. Because the world is choking in darkness. And the only strategy God has is to send light bearers into the world. You are a light bearer in this world. But what is happening to the darkness in your family and in your territory? Light must shine. But it is not by zeal. Is by the interaction of the world with your spirit. You'll be shocked. When we have crisis, you see how bereft we are of the word of God. We are bold until problem comes. The first thing that jumps out of us is fear. Because what we are truly saturated with is fear, not light. The guy is declaring with boldness until there is crisis. That's when you see what is made up of. So living epistles are the light of this world. They are reflectors of the glory of the Father. And the way we reflect light is to stay on the world until we can see the glory. So we become the very likeness of the glory. Second, if it's 10 minutes to my time, let me know. The way you operate your time here is like an army barrack. <laughs> Yesterday I didn't even know what to say. I just, I ministered in Abuja until 2 p.m. Before I rushed to the airport, I landed here by 5. I just rushed, dropped the bag, showered and came back. As I was entering, I was going up and they say you have one hour. <laughs> and the moment it was one hour, the guy showed up with paper. And say thank you very much, sir. God bless you. Your time is up. <laughs> you can't even gather yourself to. <laughs> Don't worry. We need to really have time where we celebrate the festival of the world. See, the word of God is scarce. That's why we are the way we are. In the days of the apostles, they taught the word from morning to evening. 
they taught the word into the night. People heard the word until they are sleeping, they are still teaching. Because why men slept, the enemy what? Came to sow. If the enemy sow, why men slept? God sow, why men sleep? So they were sleeping, Paul was what? Still teaching. The guy fell down, died. He went and raised him up. Say, come back and hear the word of God. <laughs> yes, you have, you have slept. You have died. Wake up. Come back and keep hearing. Peter was teaching. And then I asked him. Fell down, died. They carried him, buried him. Teaching was going on. If it happens now, church have ended. The service will not only end. People will not come there again. <laughs> you don't know these people knew that life was born in the spirit so they held the word like a sick person who cleave to a drip it's like an oxygen mask without it you suffocate and die they knew how significant it was even when there was need to legitimately attend to needs they say we will not we will give ourselves to prayer and the ministry of the word. The only way we remain apostles is when we are choked with the word of God. When you see a man who is laden with the weight of darkness, the word of God is cast in his spirit. This is why the devil will fight the ministry of the word in your life. Say, come, let's dance. Hey! 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 You see all the stars. But when you begin to teach the word and you come down, say, let's open scriptures. And you see the person. You are rusty. You are rusty. You can't, you see, I, Jeremiah said, I found thy word and I did eat it. He said, it became the jaw. So the more he heard the word of God, the more he was, he was illuminated. The more he was joyous. The more he was excited. When the word of God came alive in my spirit. Oh my God. Those were the days when I would sit down for money. By the time I realize I'm hungry, maybe I'm, I start feeling headache. And then I check the time and it's 4 p.m. And then I will remain there till 7. When it's getting dark, you know you have to rush to eat. You know we are bachelors. You have to rush to eat something and come back before you don't have anything to eat. You will sit there sometimes for... I was listening to Apostle Harumen for 8 months. Morning to night, every day. He's not, he will say some things, I will stand up and start speaking in tongues. You will hear certain things. Ah, yeah. I will hear Bishop David Oedeko. And he will release some scriptures. I will scream. Jesus, you don't know. You have, something is working now. The Holy Ghost has been activated. The dynamo has picked up. That's when men come alive. And after a while, the dimensions of God begins to break out of you. And then somebody says he has a problem. And instantly you know what to tell him. You don't know where it came from. But a dynamo has been activated. He came, he said, um, I don't know what's happening to me. He said, Kai, who is Sandra? He said, Sandra is my friend. What happened? You say, I see the... Even you don't know how it's happening. But a dynamo has been activated. Somebody said, I'm sick. You say, hey, yeah. Father, and the pain, says, ah, the pain is gone. No, you say, come on there. What did they talk like this? No, the pain is gone. You dead serious? The pain is gone. Even before you are aware, light is already breaking out of you. The Bible said Moses list not that his face shone like the sun. He interacted with glory for a long time. Even when he began to illuminate glory, he was not aware. So you wake up, you come to a place, and there is crisis because you came there. It is solved. You know, you are not even aware. Somebody say he's sick. You say, don't worry, God will bless you. And then you left. After five minutes, the person checked. All the symptoms have gone. You didn't pray. You touched him. But what is on your inside is breaking out. The apostles knew. Until a point came when Peter will come out of the place of prayer. There's no time to pray for the sick. They will just line them on the street. The more as his shadow is touching them, they are healed. They have become conductors of eternal realities. This is where Christianity becomes hard, but this is where the glory is. If I came here and I was talking, talking, you say, Oh boy. Oh, 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 oh. That will only inspire your faith. This is what makes men. That's why in morning sessions we, we come down. You will sit on the word, you will study it, you will meditate on it, you will listen to exhortation until you think the word, you do the word, and you talk the word. That's where you can be an emitter of light. 
before you think the scriptures have gone ahead of you. At that point, the devil will come to you and find nothing. This is where men become mighty. Living epistles. When you look at them, it's, it's, the, it's the Lord you see. Witnesses in the spirit. Second, it says you are God's building. He said, Behold, I lay in Zion a tried stone, a precious stone, a cornerstone, a tried stone. A tried stone in this context is not necessarily a man that has gone through problems. Because there are many problems you can withstand without the word of God. A tried stone is a man that has become the reality of the world. That's the man God builds with. You know, in Psalm 105, from verse 17, let me show you how, what the Bible means when it says a, a tried stone. Psalm 105, verse 17. And remember, I am showing you these things, they are relevant in time and they are relevant in eternity. I told you that in time, the relevance of the fact that you are an illuminator of the light of God is that you provide witness for him. In eternity, that is a criteria for you to be part of the new Jerusalem. A tried stone. You will not believe what this man wrote here. I'm telling you the truth. You will not believe it. <laughs> Meanwhile, they told me that this man is prayer and impartation. You want to pray and in prayer and impartation in 70 minutes. The time is not enough for prayer yet. And you are talking in part. <laughs> I say, I just laughed. Chapel of redemption. <laughs> prayer and impartation. How many minutes will you pray? Some of you here will take you two hours for you to boot. If we say pray now, eh? For 40 minutes you are still doing like this. And you say impartation. You think impartation is just take, take, and you. It's a reality that is locked up in an energy level. You have to ascend to be able to walk in those realms. Your spirit has not come alive. How can we drop something there? They do not read that Paul was preaching and he saw somebody who was crippled. They perceived that he had faith to receive and they say, rise up and walk. Your spirit opens to receive impartation. It's not just. A man can come with his own atmosphere and overwhelm you. Nothing will happen to you. Prayer and impartation, one hour. <laughs> In Calabar. I wish I was able to go far to show you something about spirit technology. So that you will know the governments of darkness that are in every realm. You will know why you came on campus and your prayer life died. I would have shown you the mystery of territorial energy balance. That the energy in creation is not the same everywhere. It's on the strength of that intelligence that we don't prophesy in a service until we have taught and built up. Because there's a height where prophecy comes. You may come for the service week, but when we begin to teach and worship, a point comes when the energy is altered. So the guy who came to the church tired, suddenly is roaring. At that point you can access his spirit. It's an energy. We alter the energy by prayer, by worship, and by the word. The same way, there are different acts of darkness that are wired into different territories. If you walk into that territory, it will choke your soul. Unless the light you carry is superior to the darkness in that territory. This is why even preachers, most of them enter some cities, they fornicate, they catch them, they pursue them away. It's not because his calling is fake. He doesn't understand the intelligence of territorial energy balance. This is why we are witnesses of light. You came to Unica as an intercessor. They knew that this one will become something until when they came to visit you in 200 level. All your short knickers became pants and you are bold to wear it on the street. You didn't know when you became like this. Even you yourself, honestly, you didn't know. <laughs> Territorial energy balance. Israel went to Babylon. 
And all of a sudden, all of them became Babylonians. Only four men were born in. And the only way Daniel was able to break through the cloud of darkness was because the Bible said in Daniel 6 10, that every day he prayed three times. He kept himself plugged to the source of life that was beyond the realm. Meanwhile, every other person that was normal had been choked. They are Babylonians. Did you not read about Israel? They were in Egypt. Even when God carried them from Egypt, their heart was still Egypt. That energy has reprogrammed their operational system. So you can take them from Egypt, but you can't take Egypt from them. Because Egypt is governed by energy. The energy of the Leviathan. God came and joined the gods of Egypt. That's why Pharaoh was the way he was. You don't know why, how important these things are. The politics of the realm. Some of you are Deborahs. I don't have time. I would have shown you the house of God. The house. You will understand that what God is building is a side of his building. Some of us are pillars. And there are ancestors of pillars in this kingdom. If you come into that ancestry, your dealing will remain like that. So because Elijah came in John, the dealings of John will be like Elijah. Because he's in that line. That's his lineage in the spirit. Some of you are in the lineage of Deborah. So the same experience Deborah had is the same thing God will subject you to. Because for that kind of witness to remain in your generation, you must be built to be able to host that dimension. Some of us are like Mordecai. Some of you are like Jeremiah's. Because all of these men of old that were representative of different dimensions of God, they are pathways for different possibilities. Most of you here are Enochs. It is God's beauty. So in the new Jerusalem, we will form a part of that infrastructure. Because we have received those dealings, those teachings, and we have become like them. So the same things that Paul did, a man will stand in this generation and do the same thing. If you were in the days of Paul, if you look at the man, you say, is this not Paul? The depth of wisdom that he entered, another person will enter that same depth of wisdom. And where Paul spoke from, that man will speak. Jacob cursed Reuben because of where he was operating in heaven. Moses came and he went into that place and he installed that curse. He said, let Reuben live and not die. Because I know where Jacob stands in Zion. If I can travel there, the things that Jacob can do in time, I can do the same thing. This one is bigger than Mantus. This one is a clan in the spirit. Because a man walks in the spirit until he finds his own identity. And suddenly, you were in church, you were walking with a pastor until you grow to a level and then you discern that you are a prophet. And this tilabus that God wants to introduce you to now is no longer babyhood doctrine. God wants to teach you the way of fasting. So you will... Every day you lose appetite for food. What is happening is that God is bringing you the DNA of your clan. Your tribe is calling upon you. God's beauty. How God tries men with his word. Until they become infrastructures that can align with his government. The problem with teaching is that it's a function of time. You build it gradually. When people understand. They don't know that something is happening to them. A point comes when everyone in that meeting becomes like a mist. And it just evaporates into heaven. So a point comes when all of us begin to hear the same frequency from heaven. Before the man says what he wants to say, you know what he wants to say. Because where he's talking from, you too have entered there. It's bigger than impartation. It's the technology of Mahanai. Heaven and earth become one. So anybody that was carried in that flight can walk. At that point, even if the man doesn't teach again, you will begin to receive truth as a body of spirit. Because you have entered heaven. The burden of teaching is that it is limited with time. I would have shown you, my goal this morning was to teach you God's beauty. But unfortunately we can't. Because the timekeeper is doing his job. You rain, you rain, you rain. Nobody picked the song. What a condition. We need to pray here for 10 hours. <laughs> you are mighty on your throne. Can you rise up for 10 minutes? You wish Zion's king. Kadosh. <laughs> you reign, you reign, you reign. You reign. Kadosh. You reign. 
When you begin to do business with the world, you come to a point where God separates you because that time He needs to chisel you into place. You may be a pillar, you may be a cornerstone, you may be a foundation. You will not be aware until you travel far enough. That's when the word of God for you will become a law. Because at this time, God cannot take things for granted with you. Because if you are not chiseled, you can't file in. You see this building, you admire it. It's because the blocks are chiseled. There are certain blocks that were divided into two. So that they can fit into a corner in order to create balance for the building. Some of you will become weight bearers. You don't know why you came for the fellowship. Everybody, they say do it. Because you have traveled into a place in the world where you are supposed to be a support system. All the weights of the building will rest on you. So God brings you the world as a law in your spirit because he wants to enlarge the borders of your heart to be able to carry the burden of the kingdom. What you will not know is that you will think in that fellowship they are trying to make a mess of you. But in Zion, in the new Jerusalem, you are a cornerstone. God builds his house. But only few can perceive in that height. The heights where the word of God becomes a law. That's where God begins to raise an infrastructure. That's where it becomes difficult. Set your life in position. You graduated with a first class. And suddenly God says, no use of certificate. You are a pillar in Zion. Even your parents will not understand. This is not zeal. I'm not talking zeal. I'm not talking negligence. I said you graduated with what? A first class. That means you are a committed person to your studies. But you now hear a new whisper. And that whisper brings you government. He say you are a pillar. I want you to go to a city. In that city. Only some kind of men dwell there. The men that can take down the foundation of Islam. There is a place in this building where I want to put them. That is your identity in Zion. Go there. And you don't know. He said, Paul and Barnabas. He said, this be the men that has started their lives for the gospel. They were receiving, deep. the word of God was a different thing to some of them. You reign, you ancient, Kadosh, Kadosh, you mighty on your throne. You may be laboring with the intercessors. Praying at the back of the cave until you hit a crescendo in Zion and God say, Go and join the politician. Because your role in this kingdom is to bear witness in political corridors. Men don't have integrity. I have labored and dealt with you until you are an upright man. Now you can stand for Zion. So, in the realm of God, you are in the lineage of men of integrity. So, God sends you to government. But you don't know that God is what? He's building His house. Young people, it's time for us to wake up. Life is deeper than everything we see in time. It is something God is working out in the spirit realm. And when that block, when that kingdom appears, oh, how glorious it will be. The blood of men on earth will become witnesses in heaven. Men that were slaughtered and slain, you think their lives were taken from them. You didn't know that they entered into another economy in immortality. Their voices become witnesses in heaven that the true God is actually a king. Men, that things were taken from them because of God, that becomes a texture of that block in Zion. Some men will not have enough texture to be pillars because on earth they didn't commit enough. But another man, he commits until even his life was taken away. So in Zion, the texture that he has is sufficient to serve as a foundation. He doesn't know that when he was entering, I began to ask myself, I say, is God really just? How can somebody, a young man, you send him to Afghanistan, you know he'll be slaughtered? Until God began to teach me that life is not lived in time. Everything that was written in our script is a witness in Zion. The guy is supposed to be a pillar, but there is a texture that he must have in order to be there. Because the foundation must be strong. So the only way he can provide that kind of witness is to give his life in exchange. His conviction is deeper than the boundaries of mortality. His conviction is deeper than the boundaries of time. Nothing can move him. That kind of a man can be a pillar. You see, I lay in Zion a dried stone. 
a precious stone. He said, they that believe will not make haste. The reason God allows those circumstances is to give you texture. Some people begin to grow when fame come, when money come, then they leave matters of texture. They now go to excellence. They now go to influence. They don't understand that ministry in itself has no value in time. It is what God wants to make out of you so that you can be part of his beauty. So the guy began with texture, but he came to a point, he saw money, he saw fame. So ministry became excellence. So the project of texture ends. Everybody is telling him, but he no longer has texture. He will go to Zion and discover that he is not in his place. Because somebody else that is not known committed to texture. He committed to texture until a point comes where because your block is not hard enough, it is that man that gave himself to texture that we go there. Because God is not unjust to forget our labor of love. The reason is not just because God is righteous. The reason is because God is building a house in Zion. You cannot be a cornerstone if God doesn't walk texture into you. You may be anywhere in the building. You can be a city. But for you to be part of the blocks, something must happen. Texture must be born until you can bear witness even in the realms of principalities and powers. These are the kind of men that we call the remnant. Enter eternity. Everybody is fornicating. It doesn't matter. I will stand as a witness. And I will not only stand, I will confront them and tell them that is darkness. So that my walls will stand in that territory as an eternal memorial. It will be said that somebody spoke for God. You can be in your office, everybody is taking bribe, it doesn't matter. I will say the truth. They can send them. Some people are in the police force because they told their car, I will not take bribe. They sent them to a village where there is no light, where there is no road. You will think you are dealing with those men. That village where they are is a testament in Zion. A point will come when therefore we point at that man and say he gave up every opportunity in life so that his life can be a witness. These are the things that create energy balance for good in territories. Men who are dying for the witness of God to be seen. These things are bigger than gifts of the spirit. They are bigger than influences and fame. It is an economy that will make Zion what it will be in eternity. The politics of the spirit. You reign. You reign. You reign. You reign. You reign. of your life and your walk with God. That's what will determine where you will stand in Zion. We run after things. We think life ends here. Paul say, if only in this life we have hope, we are of all men most miserable. We know that something comes in Zion. A city will appear in Zion and we are part of that city. Some of us will sit on thrones because of the texture. The texture. What we did in time there is no way that dimension can be in Zion unless we are coronated. The men that were able to present their necks to be slaughtered for good, he said they will receive the crown of life. That kind of witness is a place in Zion. Everything you do in time is a place in Zion. Most people will give up their whole money. Many times the word of the Lord comes to them. He says, empty your bank account. You say, what kind of thing is this? Am I the only person? There are sons of consolation in Zion. It's a place. It's a place. You become a block in that beauty. Most people, all oh God tells them, is fast, fast. Every time the word of the Lord comes to them, he says, fast and pray. What kind of thing is this? It's a place in Zion. Because there is a kind of building that can only fit at the corner. There is a kind of block that can only fit at the foundation. But where are the men that will become those blocks? Texture. 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 This is why a man is preaching. He's about to become popular. And God says, leave the city and go back to the village. Everybody is calling his name. Men can even say he's not wise. Men can say his ministry is taken out of him. No retreat, no surrender. He doesn't have time to explain to you. What he's doing is building something in Zion. As I am now, if God said, this meeting is your last meeting, I will be glory, gl grateful to him. Because I can hear him and obey. It's texture. You are not relevant in Zion because you are preaching. 
You are not relevant in Zion because men clap for you. You are relevant in Zion because every time the word of the Lord comes to you, you obey. Because these are matters of texture. Where will you stand in that beauty? For Jesus, he satisfied the claims of divine justice. And the Bible said, that word that we come, he said that word does not need the sun. He will be the light. He will be the light in that world because he was the one that brought the first and the most potent witness that could appear in Zion. What is your texture? That is what you determine who you will be in the world to come. The word of the Lord is the builder of man. This is not ministry. This is life in the spirit. You reign. You reign. You reign. You reign. You reign. I was reading the book of Hebrews chapter 11 and the first kind of witness I saw was a man that was skilled because he stood for good. So witness in time has his depth in the degree of death. A man that died for truth was the first man that was in the hall of fame. Texture. He said time will fail me. To speak of Gideon, to speak of Barak, to speak of Jephthah, of Samson and the prophets. He said, men who took the foundations of nation. That is dimensions of power. That's gift of the spirit. But when you go down, you will discover the rating. You know, the Bible said a man that can keep his soul is stronger than him that, that tears down the wall of a city. A man who takes a city is not as strong as the man that stays under government. So the first men are the men that did wonders. But when you go down, he says, some were sown asunder. Texture. From fame to death. They were sown asunder. He said, this man, the word is not worthy for their names to be mentioned. It is only in Zion that you can recognize them. I can show up now. You see Apostle Michael Rocco. A man of texture. You can't call his name in time. You may not even know him because he has walked in the direction of death too deep that men can't celebrate them. There are people in this world today that are locked out. All they are doing is praying for the will of God to be done. They don't go out. Some of them don't see the sun. And they have been there for more than 20 years. Did you read about Enas, the prophetess? The Bible said after her husband died, she was in the temple praying and fasting day and night. Nobody knew her in that generation. But when witness came from heaven, she was one of the three that God pointed. Enos. Her sacrifices were not known. There were people who were high priests in the synagogue. But there was Enos, the prophetess. All she did was pray and fast. Nobody knew her. But in heaven, she was a star. Texture, texture. She was a ranking entity in heaven. A whole generation, God was speaking to only three men. Enos, Simeon, and John the Baptist. Go and check their life. Texture, texture. John was in the wilderness until the day of his showing forth unto Israel. Simeon was in the synagogue. The Bible said when Jesus showed up, he said he went into the temple by the Spirit. Those men is God himself that walks with them. Nobody told him they had brought Jesus. He went by the Spirit and he saw an infant. He knew that was the salvation of Israel. Texture. When heaven shows up, you'll be amazed. The first people that God will consult. The word of the Lord. The builder of men. If the word of the Lord have not become a law to you, he can't build you. Because that's the only way he can chisel you until you can be part of that building. You may know it and speak revelation, light, but there's a deeper coordinate. When he builds you, you become a part of his infrastructure. You reign, you ancient Zion's where are the living epistles? They are the lights of this world. They are the infrastructures, the blocks, the tried stones. Even the principalities can't change their witness. There may be only two of them in a territory. The devil have no power to change their witness. These guys are not blocks, they are stones. They are stones. They have been chiseled. They can stay here. You'll say, all God wants to do is money. They know what they are hearing from heaven. Maybe the only thing God told them to do is prayer and fasting. You can't change them. Try everything you want. Because they know that they are witnesses on earth and in Zion. They live in epistles. They live in epistles. They are not Christians. They are not believers. They are lights of the world. 
they are tried stones. They can bear witness among men and among principalities. It's not enough to be a believer. Are you a living epistle? Lift your hands toward heaven and surrender. Let this words enter your spirit. There are certain things that are bigger than people falling down, brother. Take stock. Come on, the government. Become puffed in your skin so that devil, the devil can find you. Nothing can appeal to you. He will try you with money. He will try you with women. He will try you with influence. He will try you with power. Jesus said, The prince of this world come to me and find that nothing. Nothing moves you anymore. Every artillery from Hades has no power over you because you have become a tri stone. Those are the men that God boasts about. Politics in the heavens because you have become a witness. The devil came. He said, I've gone to and fro the earth. No man. He said, have you seen my servant Job? He came. He took everything he had. The man was still standing. He came back to God. He said, a man will give everything for his skin. God said, go and try his skin. He came and afflicted Job. He was still standing. That's a man of texture. He was a witness. God can brag about Job. And let me tell you, the book of Job is the first inspirational book that was written. Because God wants to show us the meaning of true witness. You can take ministry away from me. You can take a name. You can take glory. But you cannot change my texture. You can't change my texture. I will stand as a burning lampstand for Zion. For Zion. For Zion. Everything Job had was taken away. Men mocked him. It didn't matter. In heaven, he was popular. He was popular in heaven. God himself made a post of Job. Have you seen my servant Job? Influence taken away. Money taken away. But texture cannot be altered. Because I lay in Zion a tried stone. A tried stone. A precious stone. They that believe. That a man can become a witness. A proof that God live it forever. Nothing changes their conviction. Nothing moves them. Break them. Kill them. Take money. Take fame. They are standing. Their utterances will never change. No matter where they rise to, their testimony remains the same. They are not looking for proof among men. They are living epistles. They stand as pillars in Zion. Covenant keeping God, you are the covenant keeping God, Yahweh, the covenant keeping God, you are Yahweh, Yahweh, the covenant keeping God, you are Yahweh.
next door is what is truly valuable in eternity. Many men start accurately, but they began to grow and fraternity at different levels. I will not change my message. I will not change my texture because I fraternize with the biggest pastor in Nigeria. I will not change my texture and my message because somebody gave me a seed of 100 million. I will not change my message because I know that God is building me as a pillar that will stand in eternity. No man can buy that with money. No fame can buy that. This is why texture are precious commodities. He said the stone that is tried is a precious stone. How many want to be precious in the sight of God? You must follow the pathways of trial. Texture. Texture. We cannot bear witness before principalities and powers until we have texture. That's why we are big churches. But the darkness, the territory is in darkness. No texture. But Jesus by texture, he entered the borders of Zebulun. And the Bible said the city of darkness saw a great light. His impact was beyond the synagogue. It was territorial. Texture. Anointing doesn't give texture. Only men that the word of God is a law in their spirit. This is why men of old, Paul, we go to Ephesus, build a church for two years. The whole city came under him. God said, leave. And he leaves the church. He didn't put his son there. Any other person that has that church, you enter there. Because it's an eternal infrastructure. Texture. Texture. This is not family business. This is eternal witness. Because something breaks out from Zion. Texture. You don't know whether you are in the clan of Enoch. And men of that rank, men of that clan, all they do is to walk with God. You don't know if you are in the clan of Moses. Men of that clan, all they do is to obey God. You don't know if you are in the clan of Noah. Men of that clan, all they do is to fear and to reverence God. You don't know if you are in the clan of Abel. Men of that clan, all they do is to give to God. Excellent offerings. It's a function of texture. When God builds a man, he's an eternal witness. Forever, even the angels we know that it's possible for men to stand before God. This is the true act of worship. And until we sustain texture, we cannot bring witness and shatter the ways of principalities and powers. Said Daniel and his friends, even though he was a prince, he said, refuse to corrupt themselves with the king meat, king's meat. Continued in texture until a day came, a day came, he could challenge the prince of Persia. He didn't challenge the prince of Persia by the prophetic anointing, it was by texture. The angel came, he said, Daniel, a man highly beloved. The reason he could resonate in heaven was not because he was a seer. A man highly beloved. We may not corrupt ourselves with the king's meat. I don't need fame. I don't press after fame. I don't press after money. I don't press after acceptance. I don't press after power. That's why I'm a radical, a militant for God. I must bring the witness of God that was his thought in my spirit. And that will be the testament of my texture in Zion. Ka 
Hila Kunga and Hasis, Riana Tabira Braska, Menda can do business in deep waters, because lies. That our vocabularies will pierce into Zion and stand before God as a memorial. Say they that fear the Lord. They spake one to another, and a book of remembrance was written. Men of texture. When they speak, even their very utterance ascends to Zion as a memorial. When they pray, their prayers go to heaven as others. God preserves them in golden fires. Never strive to be popular. Never strive to be famous. Never strive to be influential. Allow God build you. That's when you can host the glory. Because when God shall build up Zion, then shall appear in his glory. Men without texture that rises by the anointing. The moment fame, money, and influence come, their message change. And the principalities know them. Some of them is even principalities that facilitate their growth process. This is why Paul did not anoint, did not ordain anointed men as elders. He ordained men that had texture. Texture. Because it's an immortal witness. You can be anointed and be popular and famous, but you will never be an elder. Except by texture. Thank you, Father. Tonight will be a night of power. Men will enter into their ordinations. Don't come heavy. I advise you take time, pray. If you will fast, fast before coming, be light. Because I am coming with a dimension of glory. That will sentence you to the path of your destiny forever. It's enough to glory only in number. We need ranking men to rise.